Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are extending the particle tracing module with another video. In this particular video, we are going to talk about an application library file and the purpose of making this video is to understand how exactly we can tackle a real life situation. Real life situation means practical problems, practical engineering problems like this particular one deals with a continuous mixture that means there is a fluid flow inlet and there is an outlet the fluid is coming from the top and it is going out from the bottom and this particular vessel, vessel has a mixture and that mixture agitates the fluid and that particular fluid contains certain particles so the particles also rotates along with the fluid flow so how exactly the particle distribution and the particle flow will change with the change in fluid flow inlet conditions or outlet conditions that might be a real engineering problem and they have rightly given a particular module that actually can be taken to understand the physics and implement the same in other problems so i'll just focus on the places where we can learn about multiple things and we can jot them down and use the concept for other simulations. So uh, if we just see initially what they have done, they have enlisted the geometric parameters because if you zoom it here, there are multiple geometric parameters needed to create this geometry. So they have created an impeller, they have created a vessel and with two cylinders, they have created inlet and outlet. So while the most difficult task is to create the impeller. So what we, we can actually do, we can actually take this particular impeller for our other physics. So you can see they have jotted down the parts as different geometric parts like this is the flat bottom tank. So this is a part of this particular geometry. This is impeller shaft and this is impeller so this impeller if, if, as you can see this particular impeller can be yeah, you can see they have actually stored it as a part library so we can actually save this you can save this particular part and you can import it in other simulation and you can use that so this is one of the importance that we can import this one and then we can use in some other uh, other simulations now another part to learn from this problem is if you go to the geometry you can understand how exactly they have created the geometry i already created a playlist where i talked about making geometries so this is a real life engineering geometry so this is very difficult to achieve and but this can be achieved by using multiple tools of console uh, geometry. So few things I'll just touch upon. So you can see uh, in the impeller shaft they have enlisted certain parameters suppose HP underscore IM. So this determines position of the lowest part of the can, if you can see. Yeah, position of the lowest part of the impeller hub or impeller shaft along if you just touch here you can see along the z-axis so we can actually learn about it so if you just uh, open this particular application library and try to understand the steps they have followed so what I am thinking I will be creating more videos on those kind of real life geometries and we will be extending our geometry series so that we can learn more so this is a kind of really prelim preliminary video wherein i can think about going to uh, making a particular series on real engineering problems and we can start developing that part by part so in another video i'll be talking about i'll be exploring this in detail and I'll be talking about creation of this impeller. So this is how we'll create more videos in our channel and that will be helpful who are dealing with real life engineering problems. 
Now I come to another learning uh, that can be taken from this particular file. So this is a uh, moving mesh. If we go to the rotating domain, you can see they have considered this impeller as the rotating domain because the shaft will not change the position but as the blade rotates it will change the position of the blade shaft basically shaft will also rotate and that rotational speed will be imparted in the impeller but the logic is the shaft is a symmetric cylinder even if it rotates it will not change symmetric positions but as this impeller rotates it will change the condition and that is why in the moving domain only the impeller has been considered or it may happen vice versa like the shaft might be standing uh, I mean it's locked from the top and the impeller we are considering the impeller is rotating with a bearing this could also be the situation that's why the shaft rotation has not been taken care of now <coughs> you need to have turbulent flow so whenever we are dealing with this kind of real life situations we have to realize that the flow that's happening around that is not at laminar flow is a very high Reynolds number flow and so your normal laminar flow module will not work you have to take this turbulent K epsilon model this is a model which is used for this kind of rotational problems in COMSOL or uh, in other simulation softwares they have taken particle tracing module because they have particles and the particles are flowing from the inlet fluid and going out from this particular part. So they need to track how many particles are going out of this particular outlet at a certain time and that's why a particle counter has been taken. It can actually give you the quantification of the particles with respect to time and this can be a useful information I have already made another video on the particle counter if you go through the playlist you will be seeing that now I talk about in the moving mesh uh, most of the things are very trivial they have an inlet where they have taken an average velocity normal velocity in the outlet atmospheric pressure condition has been taken and the walls are kept at uh, sleep conditions uh, this wall is kept at no sleep condition I guess so they have mentioned certain kinetic energy and the turbulent distribution rate those things are required for this particular K epsilon model so if you look at the equation so for the purposes of this equation those parameters are defined so I am not an expert of turbulent flow but still I can make a few videos for understanding the preliminary things in COMSOL because sometimes when we deal with this kind of uh, mixture problems we need to work with turbulent flow so it's better to understand the basic things of K epsilon model. Now they have taken few studies and you can actually run this particular file so if I just try to run this first one, it may take some time. Let's see. Yeah, it will. It's a turbulent model. It may take some time. So what I can do is I can be making videos on different parts, like how to create geometric parts, how to create impeller geometry. So we'll be making part by part videos, and we'll be having a separate playlist on that. So I hope this discussion was useful. Today it was not a simulation discussion rather than a discussion, comprehensive discussion to, to, to understand what are the things we need to know once we are moving from normal problems, not simple problems that contains simple geometries to a complicated real engineering problem that has that have complicated geometry so today i stop here i hope uh, this video was helpful